Hi, my name is Morgan McGarry, and the strategy that I chose for this week's module is the read aloud strategy. Here's an overview of what I'll be talking about in this presentation. <clears throat> First is just describing what exactly the read aloud strategy is. Then I will talk about the benefits of the read aloud strategy. Third, I'll uh, kind of go a little bit in depth into how this can be used in an RTI approach. And then lastly, I will provide other additional resources that I came across while I was putting together this presentation. So what is the read aloud strategy? Read aloud is an instructional practice where teachers, parents, and caregivers read texts aloud to children or students. The reader incorporates variations in their pitch, tone, pace, volume, pauses, eye contact, questions, and comments to produce a fluent, engaging and enjoyable delivery of a story or passage. What are the benefits of this read aloud method? Reading aloud um, can help build vocabulary. Active listening allows the students or children to collect information deeply enough to analyze and reflect upon it. Your mind concentrates on both the sounds the words are making and their meanings. Reading aloud also strengthens fluency. Fluency is often considered the bridge between decoding, which is understanding the relationship between letters and sounds, and comprehension. So when we read aloud to our students, we provide a model for fluent reading that they can emulate or practice and, or, and copy themselves. Reading aloud has also been shown to improve working memory, and working memory significantly impacts how we learn to read as, as people. And reading aloud has been shown to improve memory in multiple different studies. I, in my references, I have a um, reference to some of these studies if you care to uh, take a look at those. So how can this be used in an RTI approach? Um, starting off at the bottom with a universal screening, um, providing your, your class with a general assessment to determine whether or not they are at grade level or are showing any or demonstrating any deficits, whether it's minor or, or significant. Um, and then starting with tier one interventions, which might include teacher modeling, which is simply the teacher reading to students out loud in a very expressive, um, exciting, engaging manner. Uh, echo reading, which entails um, the teacher reading a sentence or a couple sentences, and then having uh, the students either uh, repeat individually or as a class those same sentences um, back to the teacher. Partner reading, which is partnering up two students, one who may be struggling, the other who is maybe more of a strong reader, and uh, allowing them to take turns reading, um, using that stronger reader as a model uh, for that struggling reader to help them um, grow in their reading skills. And repeated reading, which is reading the same passage or same text multiple times to gain uh, better fluency and better uh, reading comprehension before moving on to maybe a more difficult text. Tier two strategies might include pre-teaching, which is reviewing the passage, um, identifying maybe uh, important uh, vocabulary terms before reading the actual text itself, and it's typically done in a more small group uh, instruction. Um, it might also include uh, fluency-oriented reading instruction, which entails a lot of the same uh, strategies that I talked about in tier one, like teacher modeling and repeated reading. However, this is done in a more extensive manner, which can be done uh, maybe two to three times a week. 
And then tier three interventions could include uh, quick reads, which is a pretty extensive uh, program where students do this, uh, they go through a four level program three to five times uh, a week and it's done on an individual basis. Uh, and it can start, it range, times can range from 15 to 30 minutes depending on the need. And then the DIBELS Next ORF assessment, uh, DIBELS stands for Dynamic Indicators of Basic Early Literacy Skills. Next ORF stands for Oral Reading Fluency. Um, and this is an assessment used really to monitor early reading and literacy progress. Um, it can also be used as a screening tool. And if all else fails um, and, and interventions don't seem to be working, it would be best to advocate on behalf of the student to um, reach out and get a SPED evaluation to determine if there might be a learning disability present. And lastly, just some other helpful resources that I came across during my uh, research on the, <laughs> on the topic. So I've included a variety of different um, resources. Some of them include uh, different articles written by Reading Rockets to discuss some of the benefits of the read aloud method and how it helps with comprehension. Um, strategies you can do or 10 resources that you can use at home to help your child if they are struggling with reading fluency. Um, I've also provided video examples of how to actually do a read aloud strategy. Um, I've also provided a, a link to, I think it's from the Indianapolis Public Library. They had pre-recorded um, individuals reading aloud a variety of different children's stories and they're all free to use. Um, and then I shared a, um, a blog that a woman had shared about how she makes reading aloud more interactive and even movement based within her elementary classroom. And that is all I have.